Do you know that the very first thing you were ever taught, like literally the minute you were born, was how to suppress your feelings? Think about it, you come out crying and somebody says to you, it's okay, it's okay, here, have some food. <laughs> and then you basically spend the next 18 years learning how to ignore the rest of your body signals. I mean, you get woken up to go to school, no matter what your natural circadian rhythm might be. You don't get to eat lunch when you're hungry, but you have to eat it when it's lunchtime. You can only play at recess and you have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. And all of this is in preparation for spending the rest of your life at a job where you are expected to feel unrelieved stress, to gobble down your food and run errands during a very short midday break, stay up late to get things done at home, and then wake up early to do it all again the next day. Like truly, it is no wonder that you have found yourself here in your 50s or 60s or 70s or wherever you are, and you've almost completely lost touch with what's going on inside your body. But here's something really important to know. If you want to change your body, you know, like the way losing weight <laughs> changes your body, you actually need to be able to feel your body. And here's why. Everything that we do in life goes like this. You have a thought and that thought creates a feeling. And then that feeling drives your actions. This is how biology always works. And most of the time, you don't really need to hear the thought or feel the feeling because the actions are helping you run your daily life in a great way. Like you have habits like brushing your teeth or doing the dishes or driving to work that are super helpful for keeping you healthy or keeping your house clean or <laughs> keeping you employed. I mean, really, thank goodness for biology. But that subconscious biological chain of thought, feeling, actions also has you doing things like exercising too much or going straight to the snack drawer when you're stressed out or staying up late watching TV when you're trying to go to bed. Habits that you want to change in order to lose weight. My new book, My Nova Menopause, is all about habit change for weight loss, like specifically the weight loss habits that used to work when we were younger, like the whole eating less and moving more thing, that just don't work anymore for menopausal women. And in the book, I spell out in great detail exactly how to change your habits by using something that I call the two-step tool, where step one is to find your thoughts, and step two is to decide if they're helpful. Now, last week, I had a video that was all about step one, and there's a link in the description box if you didn't get a chance to watch that one yet. But in step two, where we decide if your thoughts are helpful, I know that that word decide makes it sound like you're going to make a very rational decision <laughs> with your brain about the thought. But in reality, you're going to rely on a completely foolproof mechanism that will probably surprise you, your body. In fact, you're going to make the decision about whether or not your thoughts are helpful for weight loss with the feelings that you have inside your body which is very hard to do, by the way, when you've been taught to ignore your feelings for 50 some odd years, right? I mean, this is literally why I wrote you a book. Getting in touch with your body is a skill that you can learn and practice. And when you do, you can change any habit, especially the ones that aren't helping you lose weight. Now you guys, coming up in the next video in our short series next week, I have an exciting announcement about how we can celebrate the publication of Mind Over Menopause together in a way that's going to help you lose weight, love your body, and embrace life after 50 with a powerful new mindset. I'll see you then.